Sorry guys, but um, I have an unexpected announcement to say for this before we start the video. So, and the reason why I don't unexpect it is that you'll you'll see why when I start saying them. So I have some I have, I have good and bad news, guys. So, um, of course I'll start with the good news. So good news. Um, well at first it was bad, but it was able to fix. But the good news is that well my old phone broke, and. Like, you know, I wasn't able to use it anymore, but now, but, you know, my dad was able to help me and now I got a new iPhone, iPhone 11. And this one works really cool. And the battery, the, the battery, like, lasts, like, a longer time than I thought. It is, it is a new phone after all, and say, and I guess I can't blame it. But, I have some bad news, guys. This, unfortunately, may, may be my last gameplay of Apollo Justice, unfortunately, because, um... Whenever I tried, whenever I installed the game on my on my new iPhone and tried to record, the game would keep crashing for some reason out of nowhere. Whenever I tried to record it, so I don't know why, and I got really upset because I really wanted to know why, but I couldn't. I tried to even look it up to see what the problem was, but I couldn't. I couldn't find anything related. So unfortunately, guys, this will this will most likely be my last gameplay recording of of Apollo Justice. Luckily, and before you say that, before you know it, guys, luckily I was actually able to record this last uh, this last part before my old phone broke. So, this is I will say this is the last part of episode two. And so with that being, and so with that one, um, I'll just watch videos of uh, of Apollo Justice, um, episode three and four, and then I'll probably just make a little summary. I'll make like a, a little summary video. I won't put it in public. I may put it unlisted, and and then I'll post it on the community post. I I don't know like and I mean I know I probably I know it's probably a little weird for me to do that, but I just feel like like you know it's, it's a summary video, so I don't think it's like a really public known video and all that stuff. So which is why I'm gonna have it. Which is why I'm summarizing episode three and four will be an unlisted video and will just be posted in the community post. So yeah. I know you guys may question. I know you guys may question why I'm gonna do that, but well, I don't know. It's just that a summary video. I don't think it really deserves. Um, I don't think it's like you know an entertaining video, which is why I'm gonna have it unlisted. It's just only a summary. It's only summarizing episode three and four, and yeah. So yeah. With that being said, guys, unfortunately, this will be the last Apollo Justice gameplay video, and. Well, if you guys are if you guys are worried about Dual Destinies and Spirit of Justice, the the last two games, don't worry, those things actually work. Luckily, so I'm able to record those. But unfortunately, this will be my last Apollo Justice gameplay video. And then after that, I'll make a video, an unlisted video of me summarizing episode three and four, at least because like you know, it's of course episode four is like long, but it's considered that it's the last episode. And then once I'm done with that, I will do some record. I'll do some uploading on Phoenix Wright Dual Destinies. So once I'm finished watching all the, like you know the, no like you know watching episode three and four from someone else's gameplay, then I'll summarize them. So yeah, with that being said, um, enjoy the last part of, the last part of episode two and the last part and the last gameplay video of Apollo Justice. So yeah, enjoy. What's up, y'all? Random Panty Gamers here. Welcome back to Apollo Justice Eighth Attorney. We're about we're in the trial now, and this most likely will be the last trial for the episode. Then we had the ep and then we're halfway done through this, and then yeah, we're like we're about and then we're like about halfway done with the with the game with this game. And Jesus, it's, it's already like almost a month though, which kind of sucks. But yeah, but at the same time, I want to like so actually come to think of it, guys, I don't know if I'll be able to beat Dual Destinies, most likely, but I'm not hundred percent sure. Considering that I only have three months left, it's already been a month, and I didn't even beat the first this first game yet. Only just about halfway through, but ugh. Oh no, crap! There we go. Um. So yeah, uh, we're gonna turn about corner. Uh, yeah. There we go. Okay. This is it, the big day. Did you get any sleep? Yeah, I went to bed at 1 a.m. or so. Oh, what time did you wake up? Oh, ugh, crap, hold on, guys. 
Uh, what time did you wake up? 3 a.m. It's only two hours, Apollo. At least you have me. And Mr. Hat. And the amazing Mr. Hat, of course. Here's looking at you, kid. Like today, Apollo? That voice. Oh, Phoenix. Hey, uh, get any sleep? Mr. Wright. I was going out of my mind with boredom, so I signed myself out earlier today. Somehow that place makes fake piano playing at the end of Shine pasta joint seem almost fun. Daddy, do you know who prosecutor Gavin's witness is today? Take a guess. Hmm, how about a little plum? <laughs> that Sherman tank of a mom? Nope, guess again. That's too bad, you know. Speaking of moms, you need to find me a new mommy one of these days, Daddy. Oh, so it's true. That kind of, I think that proves Trucy, Trucy is actually the, adop the adopted daughter of Phoenix. So Phoenix is not actually taken with the thing. So Trucy just an adopted daughter. Right? Because I've been hearing, because I've been like hearing a bunch, because I'm hearing a bunch of people saying, at least like you know before at least, that um, Trucy is like the adopted daughter. But I guess that's proved that there's no mommy. So at least no mom of her. So that means Trucy the adopted daughter. The Phoenix. It's barely morning and you're at it already, Trucy. <laughs> okay, see, this is why I don't buy their father-daughter relationship. <laughs> so, Mr. Wright, do you know who the prosecutor witness is? As she couldn't think of it, I wonder what Trucy's last name was before, besides Wright. Alita Tiala, your client's fiance. So she's testifying against Waki. Doesn't that prove she actually is a murderer then? She's going to be a witness? But that seems odd. Why would she testify against her own fiance? You have to wonder what Gavin's up to. What's this going down? Today that much is clear. Well, not to worry, I've got my panties back. If you can't find a killer, I'll put one out of there. <sighs> How's that gonna help? You have to literally prove though. Court is now in session for the trial of Waki Kataki. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Prosecution is warmed up and it's sold out house. And it's a sold out house. Very well, to recap, while yesterday's witness seemed more guilty than any other party, you'll keep panty snatching. We did find out one thing for certain. There were three people in that park at the time of the murder. The witness, the victim, and the defendant. Correct her, Judge. And today, I'd like to do something in the little new age. I like to look at this horrible crime from the outside. The outside? The acquisition of the murder weapon, the preparation for the act. Our poor defendant told all, you see, to his betrothed. His betrothed? <laughs> his fiance, her judge, his partner for life with no chance for parole. Very well, you may show the, um, lucky lady to the stand. You. Your name and occupation, Fraulein. Alita Chiala, my occupation is future wife. Hmm. Ah, oh, traditional values, I respect that. Too many brides these days, can't even weed baskets blindfolded underwater. Yet you're here today as a witness for the prosecution? To be honest, I didn't want to testify at first, but I couldn't hide the truth. Hmm, honestly another admirable trait. Pauline, is it true that on the day of the crime, the defendant walked to talk and confessed his plans? His plans for murder? Yes. The witness will give her testimony to the court. Walkie's plan. The day that the family health checkup results came back, when Rocky found out that Dr. Miranda had lied, he flew into a rage. I'll teach him, he said. He took one of the family's pistols. And you already know what happened that night. I just don't see how anyone but Rocky could have done it. Hmm. So the pistol did belong to the Kataki family then? 
Yes, with regards to this, an investigation is underway at the Kataki Mansion. On charges of the possession of illegal firearms. And the bullet that took the victim's life, was it? Fire from the pistol the defendant pr procured. Yes, this has been proven. How can you prove something like that? Both gangway marks on the barrel that fired them called rifling marks. Rifling marks? Think of them as being a gun's fingerprints, left on every bullet it fires. Uh, when did you and when did you first hear about Walkie's plan? It was the day of the murder. I I should have stopped him. I just didn't think he would actually do it. Very well. So the defense may begin the cross examination. Ooh, okay. The day that the family health checkup results came back. Okay. Teaching me how you took on the daily pistol. I already know what happened that night. Yeah. Just see how anyone but Monkey could have done it. Um, I guess but there had to be someone else, so hold it! How can you say that for certain? How? Objection! Objection! Her <laughs> forehead. You were afraid from badgering the Vrolene. It was the defendant, um, Waki, was it? Who took the pistol from his home. We know this for a fact now. Or suppose we do. So, how can anyone else have to use this pistol to shoot the victim? They could not. Simple logic. Ja? That does seem to be the case. Does the defense have anything to say regarding this point? Could someone else have used that pistol? There has to be another. No way to walkie. Based on your testimony, there was clearly another. One other person had access to that pistol. What's this? Hmm, interesting. Let's ask the defense then. Tell the court who this other person with access was. I guess it'll be Alina Tiala? Hmm. Take that? Well, of course. I mean you, Miss Tiala. Me? But why? You were quite clear when you told the court. You heard about the pistol from the defendant on the day of the murder. In other words, you knew what he was planning. Objection! Objection! Let me get this straight. You intend to tell us that the lady stole the pistol from her fiancé? And kill the man in cold blood on his behalf. I've heard of people doing strange things for love, but this? Does seem a bit unfathomable, to be sure. I'm all for room after recording for your partner. Oh god. I think I would hesitate that murder. do more than hesitate. But what if a different connection could be proven? A connection between the witness and the victim? We might find that she had a personal motive beyond wanting to her about Beyonce. Hmm, that would be thing that would that would put things in a slightly different light. What possible connection are you suggesting? You know what I'm starting to think? I don't even think that the police never looked inside that safe. I have evidence showing a connection between the witness Matiola and the victim. It would be the chart, right? This one. Take that! That looks like a medical chart? Found inside the safe at the Marathas Clinic. I'd like to draw the court's attention to the names written on the chart. What? Miss Tiana, whatever. Why is your name on the chart? <laughs> well, care to explain the meaning of this, Tiana? Miss Tiana? I'm not sure what you mean by meaning, Mr. Justice. Oh, <laughs> A warm little fiancé just froze over. I wasn't the staff on that clinic until half a year ago. It was boring, so I quit. That's all. Is there a problem with that? She's, she's starting to feel like a different person now that she's looking like that. Miss Yara, you testified that you had no connection to the victim. And I don't, now. Now? I quit half a year ago, didn't I? So there's no connection. 
Let me guess, you're the kind of guy who can't rest until he knows every last detail of his girlfriend's path. Am I right? That's not true at all. Why I... I breathe the ones I love. That's not an objection. There's no connection now. Doesn't fly in a court of law. Doesn't fly? She's one tough nut. Well, she probably feels right at home with the Katakis. You left your job at the Romantic Clinic, true. But you remained... You were re being connected somehow. Very well, Mr. Justice. Show us evidence that proves the witness is still connected to the Miraculous Clinic. Uh... So it's not the chart. I guess... Uh, the sandals? It was found at Miraculous Clinic, so I guess it's these, so... Take that! These sandals were found in the Miraculous Clinic lobby. They're yours, aren't they? Huh. Well, who knows? I'm sure there are lots of people who were to be able to handle. So sorry, Fraulein, but your act isn't working. <laughs> your moment of hesitation just now cost you. What's with you? I thought you were on my side. Perhaps you aren't aware that Toad leave Toad A simple analysis of these cinders will reveal all. Oh, now we see your true colors. I was wanting to cooperate with you from the beginning. I just wanted... I just wanted you to help get Walkie back on the street and narrow. Hmm. This court thinks you need to worry less about Walkie and more about yourself. It sounds as though we need to hear a bit more about your story. Your sandals were found in the entrance to this clinic. Which means you went there on the day of the murder. Well, there's a little point in denying it. Very well, the witness will tell us about this visit. Why did you go to the Merchant's Clinic that day? <sighs> another question, another testimony. I did go to the clinic that day, my first time in a half a year, since I quit January. I went to warn him, warn him, after all. I knew Walkie had a pistol. Okay. The doctor always was a timid man, too timid to admit his own mistake. Why else would I have gone? I'm not hiding anything dark. I want to tell him to be careful as an old friend. By mistake, you mean... The mistake we heard? About... On the defendant? <laughs> Sorry guys, I'm just... Trying to keep myself up because I'm recording this about... Around midnight. The boss operation? He was timid, a small man, but I never wished him harm. I just thought I should let him know, you know? Hmm, that doesn't make sense. Yes, but there's still one thing, which does not. What's that, Prosecutor Gavin? The sandal left in the lobby, of course. We can assume she wore these sandals in the clinic, Cha. Ja. Then why did she not wear them home? If it were me, I would have worn them home. I would have worn those sandals home too. So why were the sandals left behind? Because of the slippers? Ugh, he pointed out the contradiction before me. There's probably a, there's probably a good explanation for this, right, Miss Yala? Say, for instance... There happened to be a similar pair of sandals there, which you were you were a war home by mistake. Actually, that's right. I'm impressed, Mr. Gavin. Oh, it is nothing. There is, after all, no other possible inclination. Jaw forehead. Oh, what the? No fair. He's filling the holes in his, in their testimony. The defense may begin the cross examination. I need to start talking louder to the mic because for some reason, like you know, then again, compared to this one, it's. Bleh. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. To, I don't know to you guys if I'm loud enough. But if you need to try and be louder, I'll try to. But at the same time, I can't promise that. I did go to the clinic that day. The first time in half a year since like when January. Okay, wait, no. This is cross examination. Went to warn him and told. What there was a timid man. Too timid to admit his own mistake. Uh, what mis uh, mistake? Hold it. You mean that act of malpractice on Walkie, correct? If had just told Walkie the truth in the beginning, none of this would have happened. True, our operation was the start of this whole affair. Oh, of course. If, if he told him to. He might have been erased by the Katagis much earlier. A disturbing thought. We know that Maratha's clinic had to tie to the Katagis family. He probably couldn't have gone to the police even if I really wanted to. That's why I knew we had to warn him. 
would have gone. I'm a honey, and it dark secret. But hold on. That was a put that Lily just freaking Kentucky shard. This is kind of dark secret, isn't it? Uh, let me try and just flash up. Let me try and present it again. Objection! This chart was found inside a safe in the doctor's office. Yes? Why would why would this one chart be in the in safe? Miss Yala, you know why it was, doesn't you? Don't you? Mind filling me in? Dr. Miranda didn't have the leisure of making mistakes. That's why he wrote up a false report and kept the truth locked away. Bad hurt, Doctor. But this is where you come in, Miss Yala. The nurse was file, who filed his chart with you, which means he knew about Maki's failed operation. Interesting. You were in the same position as Dr. Morant. Kind of makes it hard to claim no connection, doesn't it? You both were novice, I'll give you that. Mr. Justice, you must know I was only a nurse. The doctor is responsible for the charge content. Mm, this chart business seems to be quite important. Please amend your testimony accordingly. Too bad, little attorney. Oh, here we go again. My bracelet's reacting again. What is it, Apollo? I felt my bracelet vibrate just now. Your bracelet? Just like yesterday, like you said. Witness is unsure of something, their nervous habit gets them away. But I can't see anything, Apollo. Huh? Eh? What's my bracelet reacting to? Wait, maybe... Yes, that has to be it. What has to be it? Your senses, Apollo. It must be sharper than mine. Huh? I can't see it, but you can sense it. I don't know about that, Trucy. I don't have some kind of special power or anything. Listen to me, Apollo. There's a weak point somewhere in Miss Yala's testimony. But we don't know what her nervous habit is. Well, then what do we do? You have to perceive it yourself, Apollo. With your eyes and your senses. So I have to do this myself, okay. Well, then it's up to me and my bracelet. I don't know why, but the bracelet helps. Somehow touching it helps me focus. Let's give it a shot and bring down that testimony. I go to the clinic now for a half a year old ch Okay, well, let's give this a try then. Wait. Wait. Hold it, right here. Gotcha! Why go to the clinic for a half a year old chart now, you ask? But, you know why you would go now, don't you? I don't know what you're talking about. It was quite clear, Miss Yala, you have a nervous habit. The moment you said the word now, you used your right thumb to fiddle with your ring. What? She wasn't sure, I saw it. Now, that's the key word. The chart wasn't a part of your past. It was a clear and present, 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 bleh. That's ridiculous. Why if that were the case, I would have had six months to do something about it. Indeed. Eh? Which means something happened quite recently. Something to make that chart a problem for you now. I've got her on the rope now. I can feel it. Time to strike the killing block with evidence. Missy Ellen, there's no use trying to hide it. The chart became a threat to you now because of this. The checkup report? Ah, uh, because of what? I think it might be the checkup report. Take that! A health checkup report belonging to the defendant. The Kentucky are trying to get out of the business. The health checkup this month was their first year, first ever. What did you What did you think when you heard about this? Eh? Oh, n nothing. Why should I think anything? Oh, I would think you were positively beside yourself, because you were afraid. You knew what Waki's chest x-ray would reveal. <sighs> A full half year passed since the operation. You thought you were home free. When the chart came back to haunt you. <coughs> e 
There we go. That's all, Your Honor. What? What just happened? Did the witness just admit to lying? I sensed it. There was a great aura em emanating from her forehead. We quit banging a wall. <laughs> Very cool. So the lady was lying, it seems. That's correct. She said she had no connection to the Maractus Clinic. But her connection was deep indeed, a bit too deep. If the Kataki's got a hold of the chart with her name, she'd be finished. Isn't that right, Miss Yala? You guessed it. Okay, that's cool. I'm not gonna lie, guys, I actually like this new I like I actually like the new mechanic of perceiving the truth just by nervous habits. I don't know about you guys. That's definitely one of my Definitely like a cool mechanic. Wouldn't say it's favorite, but it's a cool one. Can't wait to do more of that. Order, order. I did it. I broke her testimony. Amazing, Apollo. I didn't see it at all. Daddy was right about you. Wait. Miss Tiala? It's true, that chart was bad news for me. But that's why I went that's why I went to meet the doctor that day. But that's all. I told him about walking and went home. It appears the cross examination is far from over. What? She hid the truth from us. This is clear. Yet, it is not clear that the truth has anything to do with the case at hand. Hmm. Very well. The witness will add this to her testimony, and we'll have a bit more cross examination. Ugh, so close. You're still close. Keep on her, Apollo. Nothing happened at all. I warned him and left. But there was a splash red on the lamp, but at the same time there's also a bullet in the safe. So it's either I got a so there's a little contradiction there, but it might be either the lamp or the bullet. I'm gonna start with the bullet. But objection! You say nothing happened in the doctor's office? I I disagree. Take a look at this. What's that? Looks like a squished ball of squished up ball of clay. Kind of like you actually. Oh frick you. This boy was on the Maratus Clinic office. Something did happen in that office, Miss Tiala. Objection! Objection! You know that they're joking around. The police investigated that clinic. Objection! Objection! Ah, but this was stuck inside the doctor's safe. Inside the safe? I guess the police didn't check that far. Objection! Objection! But there is a problem. How can you say that bullet was fired on that day? Objection! Objection! Weren't you the one who explained rifling mark to us? The pistol was taken from the Kentucky mansion that day. If the marks on this bullet match the murder weapon, and that proves the firearm was discharged in that office on the day of the murder. Not bad, her forehead. Bailey, have this bullet analyzed immediately. Whew, so far so good. 30 minutes later, a report arrives. The rifling marks on both bullets are identical. Well, it seems that the bullet in the safe was fired from the murder weapon. Perhaps the defense would like to state their position. The bullet in that safe proves one fact. A pistol was fired in that office on that day, and at the time of the firing, the safe was open. The safe which contained the top secret chart. Do you think someone was threatening Dr. Maractus? In order to open the safe? Only one person was in a position to do such a thing. Our witness, Alita Tiala. Order, order, order. Mr. Justice, where are you going with this? Are you accusing the witness? Alita Tiala knew about Waki Saki's botch operation. She got engaged to him without telling him about it. As long as that bullet remained in his chest, his days were numbered. What if she married him and the, the bullet finally reached his destination? What? That reminds me. Apparently the Kitakis have been asserting themselves in lawful business practices. They're making quite a great deal of money. A fortune, if you will. 
Nefarious. And so she planned to marry him just to get her hands on his fortune? Objection. Who? Lucky. You keep talking trash about my Lena. And I'll sue you, lawyer man. Huh? Me? Yeah, you said... You said you'd... you You'd abuse my Alita. Um, I think you mean accuse? Same different. Well, you can't have her. She's mine. It was me. I shot that doctor. Me. He took me to die, so I left him to die too. There in that park. At this rate, I don't think admitting admitting your guilt is gonna help anything. The evidence is everything in court. Monkey. Just cool down a second. Oh, okay. You keep your hands off my leader or out. <laughs> Miss Yala? I'm sorry, I just... I've been so long since I laughed so hard. Something funny? Walkie? Wake up and smell reality. A uh, little baby? The signature on the chart, the engagement... I mean, come on, it's so obvious. Even for brainless bell brats such as yourself. This is being weird. Shit, this girl starting starting to be like Dahlia Hawthorne to Phoenix and also to um Terry Falls from the from the third game. Just trying to marry people just to get the money and not actually being in love with them. And then to tend to like what frame or murder them. Alita. Your honesty is like a breath of foul air, Fraulein. Hey, I wasn't getting out of this clean, anyway. So, the family fortune is what you're really after? That's right, I wanted the money. No way, that's whack. I ain't trying to hear that. Should have done the wedding earlier. Oh well. By the way, can I ask you a question? Who, me? I believe you said you were going to abuse me. Accused. Oh, what crime might I ask? Huh? Oh, I'm a bad girl, sure. I got close to that brat because I wanted his money. But he was the one with the pistol. He could have fired into the safe after I had already left the clinic. What? I never do a thing like that. It was definitely like that silly little it was definitely a silly little brat. Or little brat. Or just silly brat. Wait, what are you talking about? Trucy? You had the most to lose if that chart was found. But I didn't have a pistol now, did I? Well, you could have taken walkies. You think he had mentioned that, you know? All I heard him say is, it was me, I shot him. OBJECTION! OBJECTION! That's only because he's trying to protect you. Sorry to intrude in this lovely conversation. But the two of you are forgetting one critical point. What? What point? Certainly, the Fraulein wanted that chart. You assume she threatened the doctor into opening the safe, but then... Wouldn't she have taken that chart? Oh. You see? The chart would have been left in that safe. Aha! <laughs> He's right. Mr. Yala. Yes? It is clear to this court that you are not a very good fiancé. Oh, I'm flattered. Perhaps it's time you told us the truth. Tell us about yourself, including your actions and whereabouts, on that day. Don't forget. We've proven that you were at the Miraculous Clinic on the day of the crime. Oh boy. Yes, I went to the clinic that day to speak to the doctor. I wanted that chart, but I failed to get it, so I went back to the clinic later. In any case, I didn't shoot him. You don't even have proof I stole that pistol, do you? And that brat was spotted in the park at the moment of the crime. Frankly, I don't think it matters if Dr. Matthew was shot in the temple or not. Hmm. You went back later? That shirt was dangerous, you understand? I need to get rid of it, that's why I went that day. But you couldn't get the chart then, could you? And later that night, Dr. Maracta was shot. I heard about the shooting, waited a day, but then I had to go back. No easy feat with the cops all over the place. Ah, that was you? Dump. Uh, Apollo, it's down. It came from behind the door. 
Someone in there. A break in. They left through the window. So that was Alita Tiala. So you were the burglar. That was you two? If only I had one more minute. Then I could have opened the safe and gotten the shard. So she put the first two numbers, seven and nine. What? That's trespassing. I'm brazen at that. Brazen, I don't know. Oh, is this a trial for trespassing now? Besides, you can't blame a girl for wanting to protect herself. Shh. Girl, doesn't even matter if you're a girl. You could, everyone wants to protect themselves at one point. They are gangsters, you know. In any case, Mr. Justice, you're cross-examination. I made a little crime to avoid the big one, eh? Oh boy. Yes, I went to the clinic that day and speak of the blah, 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 blah. I wanted that shot, but I failed to get it, so I went back to the clinic. Mm -hmm. In any case, I didn't shoot him. You don't even have proof I stole that pistol, do you? I don't know. Fingerprints were wiped, so I don't. So we, we can't exactly prove it. Unless you were the one that wiped it, I don't know. That brat was spotted in the part of the moment of the- Actually, it would make sense if you did use a pistol, but at the same time, I don't know. We can't really prove that she did use a pistol. Uh, frankly, I don't think it matters if Dr. Marathas was shot in the temple or not. Well, I, well, I'm pretty sure it does, because then again, we've been in the last trial, so hold it! Hold it! Dr. was shot in the right temple, yes? Now it seems... Let's review the facts again, shall we? The killer was from this from if the killer shot from this location, the bullet would have struck our victim square in the forehead. However, the entry wound was in the right temple. Yes, we heard testimony on this yesterday. At the time of the shooting, the witness was standing here. Just before the gun was fired, he shouted. The victim turned his head to look. And to look and was shot. Objection! Objection! But that testimony was proven to be a lie. Our egregious panty snatcher, Mr. Stickler, did witness the crime. But he was standing to the north, next to the trash can where he tossed those panties. If Mr. Stickler shot from this location, the bullet couldn't hit his right temple. Tell me, silly attorney. What? Do you remember what you had for breakfast this mor that morning? Do you remember, Trucy? I thought we got the milk for breakfast. What matters is one thing, the doctor was shot in his right temple. If that's the case, there can be only one explanation. The painting guy was mistaken. Objection! Objection! But his location was proven. You can't write that off as being mis if him being mistaken. Objection! Objection! Then why don't you show us her forehead? Show you what? Must I explain everything? Very well, let's recap. If the witness panties guy was standing to the north, then where was the shooter standing? From what location did the killer shoot the victim? But wait, if the witness was standing there, how could anyone shoot the victim in the right temple? <laughs> I merely laid, laid out the facts for us. It is up to the one possessing the shiny forehead to show up. If you can, that is. Walkie Talkie was standing at the killer mark. Wesley Stickler at the witness mark. And of course, Palmer Rackett at the defective mark. Let's hear what the defense has to say. Where was the killer standing when they shot the victim? Well, kind of think of it, um... There was like you know, if we were to assume the victim did look to the to his right, where the witness is standing, it was shot at the right temple. Then it wouldn't be at the killer with the killer mark nor the witness mark. So it had to be at some place else. As the facts stand now, we can't explain this crime without contradicting ourselves at some point. But I know why. The real killer shot from an entirely different location. What are you talking about? I don't see another place. Apparently, Mr. Justice does. Let's hear it. Where in the park did the killer shot shoot the victim from? Objection! 
Objection. It's time to raise the roof and the stakes. Huh? Penalties are such frightening things, don't you? But what if they were a bit more terrifying? Oh, come on, you're gonna up my penalty? Ah, damn it. Like so. Double penalty? Her forehead wishes to take us in a new direction. Then he must be ready for the challenges ahead. Challenge accepted. It's just this time. Are you sure, Apollo? The key is the witness, Mr. Sickler's testimony. If we believe that, if we know where he stood, and the victim turned where he sh when he shouted, there's only one place the killer could have been. The killer shot the victim from here. It would be anywhere back here, but something telling me it's probably from the stand then. So I'm gonna try to stand. Take that! I believe we we all we all owe a dev of gratitude to Miss Alita Tiala. What, what do you mean? Thanks to you, we had a chance to review the crime, and this time we were prepared. We know that Wesley Stickler was telling the truth. We should have listened to him from the beginning. Wesley Stickler was standing next to the trash can when he saw the two when he saw the two men. He shouted just as he told us in his testimony. And the victim turned to look in his direction. A shot was fired. The victim was hit in the right temple. Oh no. Oh yes. Which direction was, was his right temple facing at that moment? That's right. Toward the noodle stand. Order, order, order! So you're saying the killer was inside a noodle stand? Objection! Objection! Let's think about this a bit more, shall we? You say the killer was inside the noodle stand? Which would mean the victim, Dr. Maratis, came to the park, wheeling his own murderer in the car behind him. That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Well, I mean, you could have snuck in. I think you'd notice if you were pulling someone along. Objection! There is something we should worry about before that. Why was he pulling the noodle stand in the first place? Objection! Objection! Let's deal with our problems on one on at a time, shall we? Someone was hiding in the stand. We have not come this far to talk about the possibilities. Let's talk about the proof, baby. Show us evidence that proves someone was in that stand. Can I prove that? You want evidence that someone was in that stand? Well, I've got it. And... Uh, there we go. I've got it right here. <clears throat> Intriguing. Let's see what you've got to say. Show the truth that someone was hiding in the noodle stand. There were... There were slipper footprints right next to the stand. Well, you we did the footprint analysis, so it's gotta be these slippers. Take that! The Miraculous Clinic, and they're covered with paint. These slippers were found in the trash can near the crime scene. And? A single slipper print was found at the scene. Right next to the noodle stand. <laughs> oh, and Miss Yala. Your toe print was found in a left slipper. <laughs> in other words... <clears throat> This is this proof is you were inside, inside that noodle, noodle stand! stand. Eee! Objection! Objection! Yet there was only one slipper mark found at the scene. Can't it be called a footprint in good faith? Objection! Objection! Observe the diagram. A park pathway runs right next to the slipper mark. The slipper wouldn't leave a trace on the cobblestone path. Objection! Objection! Yet you still cannot say this is a footprint, cha. Huh? Why not? You have an impression left by a single slipper. What if it was on the stand and simply fell to the ground? Objection! Objection. That's, that's just dumb. One more thing. The little stand is typically cluttered with the tools of a noodle-making trade. There's no room for a person to hide in there. To ride in there, then. You have a point. Could someone have hidden that stand? Oh, I think I might be onto something. 
I think I figured out one of our pieces of evidence. In order to make room in the stand, something would have to be... Off? Well, Mr. Justice, do you have proof that someone could have hidden in the stand? I can prove one thing. Someone did scheme to clear space in that stand. If you were to make room in that stand, you would have to move it off, right? In this case, the bowls would be off. And we did see bowls at the at the clinic, like a bunch of them, and even one lying at Eldo's noodle, so it would have to be the bowl. Take that! Take that. This is a noodle bowl from the stolen Eldo's noodle stodol stand. Yes, and what about it? We discovered a large quantity of these bowls yesterday. In the lobby of the Marathas Clinic. A large quantity of noodle bowls in the victim's clinic? Mr. Eldo was very clear about these those bowls. Well, I don't care with it. We have to stand and I'm finished. All my little bowls were in there too. Yet the bowls were removed. That night, there was space inside that noodle stand. Space created at the Marathas Clinic, no less. Right around the time that you were there, Miss Alita Tiala. Stop! <clears throat> I won't listen to any more of these wild fantasies. No, not fantasies. They're worse lines than that spell press pick up lines. I would like to remind the witness of her current status. The court does not consider you entirely innocent. Show me an innocent, I'll show you a fairy tale. In any case, the defense has somehow made its point. The witness had both a motive and an opportunity to kill Dr. Maractus. More fairy tales? This whole trial's a fairy tale, says you. <laughs> and please, pu pull us back down to reality, Mr. Tiala. I'll give you one last chance to explain yourself. This is it. Why was Dr. Maractus pulling that stand that night? And what was the leader Tiala doing inside? I have to get to the bottom of this case. More lies! That night, I went to ask Dr. Maractus for the chart. I had no intention of ever letting that chart fall into the Kataki family's hands. True. But Dr. Maractus didn't understand. For some reason, he thought the Katakis had me sent me. So I gave up and went home. All I did was talk to him. Somehow, I doubt that. You knew about the botched operation? So you try to get rid of the chart and save yourself. I won't make excuses. And I did warn the good doctor. I gave him, I gave him a chance. I told him that Brad got his, his health checkup report. And that he was coming to settle the score. Hmm, I see. Very right, well, Mr. Justice. Begin your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. This is the last testimony. Okay, we're getting close already. Either I perceive the truth or it's over. Wait, what? Oh, I have the option to use my bracelet. Okay, let's just let's just see which one I'm gonna use it on. Actually, I I, th I know what I'm gonna use it on. Just give me a second, guys. Um, I start now. I have to get there quicker. The way they thought the Kentucky had sent me, so I gave up and went home. All I did was talk to him. Is that true? Hmm, let me look at your left hand here. Wait, 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 wait. I see it right there. Gotcha! All I did was talk and lie. What? Show me proof. I'm pretty sure about this one. I think I'm getting the hang of this. A little flippin' confident that they gave it all away. The proof is you, Miss Yala. All I did was talk to him, you claim. You can't hide your own nervous twitch when you said those when you say those words. My twitch? What are you talking about? You have a habit of scratching that area of your neck around the edge of your scarf. What? What? This is working better than I hope. Her unconscious actions tell the truth she won't say. Habits and lies. Two dots. Connect the dots and find the truth. Don't look at me like that. I told you the truth. Blah, blah, blah. You're, you're kind of stuttering. It seemed that when you recall what really happened in that office, you can't keep your hands off your neck, can you? 
It seems that nervous habit are in conscious reaction to manifest when someone is trying to hide something. You can hide behind your scarf, Miss Yala. Something happened between you and the victim in the Ratchet's cl clinic office. And I've got proof that shows exactly what happened. There's a little splotch of freaking red on red stain on this cord and something happened definitely. Take that! What's that? You're touching your scarf again. There's something unusual about this lamp. The bulb is broken and there's a red splotch on the cord. Eh? Seeing how you hide your neck, I, I think I can, I can come up with a plausible explanation for the lamp state. Well, spit it out. This taking, this talking in circles, it's not done. It's killing me. Very well. The answer is very simple, Miss Aliyatiala. Please remove your scarf. Already? This is a trial to determine what happened in that park. Yet we seem to have drifted off target. Objection! Objection! We'll find out soon enough before drifting. As soon as the witness removes her scarf. I, I won't do it. This is insane. I'm an unrelated third party. You can't order me to remove my clothes. Mr. Young, I'm afraid you've forgotten what's already been proven. What? You're hardly unrelated. Please remove your scarf. No. No. Alright, what are you hiding in there? I knew it. So I was right, wasn't I, Mr. Leah Tiala? Ah, there's a there's a bruise mark. Your neck. This isn't that isn't what I think it is. Something did happen that night in the Morantis Clinic. Morantis Clinic. You needed to get that sharp back, no matter what it took. Even if you had to steal your fiance's pistol to do it. But wait, looking at this lamp and the witness's neck, it looks like the very opposite has happened. Exactly. The victim in the clinic that night was this witness, specifically. You tried to threaten Dr. Moratis and he attacked you. That's what happened that night at the Moratis clinic. Eric. Oh gosh, that's a lot of feathers. Order, order, order. Will someone please tell me what really happened? I told you the truth already. I went to the clinic that night to warn Dr. Maracta. Oh. That gangster knows everything. He's coming for you. Oh, Maracta, um, uh, I don't know. Looks like my clinic seen its last patience. You have to get rid of that chart. Quick, open your safe. Give it to me. So you can save your own skin? What? I know what you're up to. You want it with the family. And if they see that chart, you're finished. Leaving me holding the short straw. But if I'm going down, I want some company. You. And what happened next? He jumped at me and knocked me to the floor. Then he took that cord. Ugh. How Miranda was serious. Deadly serious. He really tried to strangle me. I, I must have blacked out. Wouldn't that make him be in trial instead? So you were the victim. And the red splotch on the cord was your lipstick. Lipstick, huh? I, I didn't want to remember that night. That's why I didn't bring it up. There, are you happy now? Eh? I was out cold, almost killed. And you claim I then snuck into that noodle stand. But how could I? Ah! Uh. Well, one thing is clear. We now know what really happened on the Miraculous Clinic. And it would seem that our victim was not entirely without blame himself. I'm sorry. I get so nervous just thinking of it. It's hard to breathe. I told you everything. Can I go home now? 
Hmm. You bear some responsibility for events that day, too. Yet if you're also a victim, this court would owe you some sympathy. Well, Mr. Justice, I believe this clears up the remaining questions for Miss Yara. What did this happen? Suddenly everyone's sympathizing with her. I don't know what to think anymore, Paul. I mean, is that it? Do we know everything we need to know about Miss Yala? Probably not. <clears throat> Very well. This finishes the cross examination of the objection. <laughs> How many reasons do you have? I just realized. <laughs> not so fast. This party's over. This party's just getting started. I said the opposite. Now we rock. What? Those spikes on your head are softer than they look. Or do you not have the stomach to go all the way? Prosecutor Gavin, how miraculous she showed the leader Tiala? She fell unconscious. But what happened next? He ran. There is more. We don't know. But she was choked hard enough to leave that mark. She would have been out for a while. Even still, what if it was her new earned in little stand? The leader Tiala half dead. Dr. Matt pulling a stand. And a bullet fire from inside the noodle stand. What if it's all true? You might have already figured out what truly happened that night. Miss Aliyah Tiava, as you can see, we're not through with you just yet. You really want to blame me for this murder, don't you? You too, Prosecutor Gavin. Me, Farley? I only wish to know the truth. Well, let's go back over what we learned up till now. On the day of the murder, Walkie saw his checkup report, for which he learned about the bullet still inside him. So he took a pistol from the family stash, with the intent to give Dr. Murta some of his own medicine. Miss Yala heard about this from Walkie. She went to the Miranda's clinic ahead of him, in order to get rid of this chart with her signature. But then, something happened. Sounds like he figured it all out. But remember, I was a victim, I was not cold. But what about Dr. Maractus? It does seem to be the problem. He had to strangle the leader Tiala, perhaps. He thought to death. But did he do at once but what did he do after his crime? How did he knock down, not dead? From the state of his clinic and the scene in the park. I think it's clear what the good doctor did next. Well her forehead, care to guess? Well, Mr. Justice, what did Dr. Marcus do? Maybe he did think he killed Tiala. Do I have evidence to show what he did next? He pulled the noodle stand, right? Take that! At his next move, Dr. Maractus stole Guy Eldun's noodle stand. What? Killing me disturbed him that much? So much he randomly stole a noodle stand? It's probably more than me the eye on that stand. It wasn't so random, remember all the bowls in the clinic foyer? Bowls that belong inside the stand? I think it's pretty obvious, don't you? That stand was at the clinic, however. The question is why did he remove those bowls? Maybe because the stand was heavy. Or heavy? Or he wanted to put something in that stand in their place. Oh, wait, you don't mean... I do. Dr. Miranda did replace those bowls with something. Your court, Miss Yala. My corpse? Dr. Maracta panicked. He thought he killed you. The next move would be to dispose of the body. That's crazy talk. You're all crazy. Objection! Objection! Then let's think about it, logically. The doctor had a place to dispose of you in mind. But on his way there, who, he, who should he run into but the defendant, Walkie Kitaki? Objection! Objection! I question your logic. What's this, Prosecutor Gavin? The park is a dead end. Why would he out head in that direction to begin with? That's right, he had no reason to go there. Oh, now I get it. It was a trick. That well brat made him do it. He made the doctor steal the stand. Objection! Objection! Tell me, why would someone go to a dead end? Well, let the park was his destination. What? Apparently the defense has an idea. Tell us what the doctor mentioned was handing for the sand. Here, please show us on this diagram. To where exactly was the victim dragging that stand? 
he was trying to dispose the body, right? So he would probably most likely leave it at the river, all the way to the to, to the left, right here. Take that! There, that's a there, that's a, a river. Yes, Your Honor. A scar. I scarcely need to explain why. A perfect place to dispose of a body. He was going to throw me into that river. He didn't have many other options for Aline. I believe this clears up all the remaining questions. The victim pulling the stand and the victim be the defendant before him. And inside the stand, you, Miss Aaliyah Tiala. Ugh. And then, the the the, the no, ma, ma, ma Wesley Sticker, of panty snatching fame, walks up. See the two men, he shouts, in that instant. I shot him? You were the only one who could have stolen Waki's pistol. It had to be you. Well, Miss Yala. Hmm. Nice work. You mean I'm right? I mean, you've done a fine job dreaming up a story. To get that spoiled brat off the hook. You're the one who's dreaming. Paul backed up everything he said with facts. If you're, if you're so sure he's making it up, give us another reason. Why was I the rest of pulling that stand through the park? Who knows? But there's one gaping, 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 I don't know, gaping hole in your logic. I think Mr. Gavin knows where I speak. Where of what? I can't believe she's still trying to deny this. It is true, Prosecutor Gavin. Must I always be the one to point out her forehead errors? <clears throat> maybe it really what? Maybe it really is something. I believe the phony speaks of her doctor's car. His car? Ah, oh, true. That's right, the Rantis Clinic had that big garage. In which had a green sports car, was it? Why would he steal the stand in the first place? If he wanted to carry a body, he would have used his car. Ah! And so we find our victim without probable cause to steal the stand. And our defense wouldn't without a case. Objection? Oh, Trucy. Um, I have an idea. You know that green car? I bet it wouldn't run. It was broken. Ah, uh, what, an, what an excellent counter-argument for me. Too bad you're quite wrong. Eh? Don't tell me you've forgotten what happened to your daddy. Daddy? Th that's right. That night... Whoops, I not me do that. That night, the car that hit Mr. Wright was that green sports car. Oh yes, I had nearly forgotten that about... I got... I got gone about it. Afterward, he drove it back to that garage and it ran fine. That's right. So why did he use his beloved sports car, hmm? Uh, a glaring contradiction, to be sure. More glaring than your forehead. No. No! Order, order, order! Well, Mr. Justice? Why did Dr. Matthew use this car to carry the body? Uh, um... Is that a crone of a surrender right here? Some advice, now that you can to you all you know. Everything you've learned over the last two days. Everything I've learned? Mr. Justice, this contradiction cast doubt on the George entire case. This is truly our last chance. The defense will explain to us what happened that night. Someone else told us to stand the car in the room and carry the body in the car. I would say someone else told us to I will I will have to say the car didn't run. I might have an idea why, but it but it sounds impossible. But I, I may I may have an idea why. I have an idea. It's all coming together. That night, Dr. Ratchet couldn't use his car. Ha, huh, I'm making even less sense than usual. Not according to my information, Miss Yawa. Put one and one together and the explanation is simple. If it's so simple, perhaps you can show us some evidence? Show us proof why the car wouldn't run that night. The panties was at the car exhaust pipe, right? So it has to be Trucy's panties. Take that! Let's see now. Panties again? 
Again, trust me, it does feel weird presenting this as evidence. All sorts of things come out of my panties. Even the truth. Another crime was committed the night of the murder. The theft of these panties, the latest in the string of similar thefts, actually. But that night, the snatcher was caught in the act. A brave young girl chased the thief until he's hit. In a miracle clinic garage. What? The snatcher hid the panties there before running. Perhaps someone in this court remembers where he hid them. Wait, what? Weren't they found in the car exhaust pipe? Exactly. By the way, I learned something yesterday. A very important piece of information. And I learned it from you, Prosecutor Gavin. Um, so you here investigating? And I was on my way home. When my hog gave up the ghost. Your hog? My motorcycle won't start. A clog is up. Ah, okay. That makes sense. Too bad. It looks like such a nice bike, too. Hard to believe that I could break from just from, just from that. Cars, motorbikes, they're all the same. Clog the exhaust pipe and they won't run. Why, how interesting. While Miss Yola and the doctor were struggling, the panty snatcher snuck into the Miranda's garage. From that time until the time, we found these. That car wouldn't start. What? what That's why Dr. Miraculous had to use a normal stand. You know, the next closest thing he could think of. Okay. Well, Miss Yala. This wraps your doubt up quite nicely, I think. So it does. So dark, can't see. Cramped. The pain. My throat's burning. What's your problem? You, Doc. I know what you did. Ah. Uh, lucky? You lied to me, so you know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna give you a taste of your own medicine, man. Wait, let me explain. Fine, I'll give you your last request. Listen, you're being tricked, but not how you think. How you think. It's not just me. No, he ruined everything. I, I have to stop him. See this at once, you two. Oh. Hmm. Honey. This isn't the way it was supposed to turn out. Oh well, too bad. Okay, I think we finally nailed her. There's still one mystery. How did you manage to disappear from that stand? In the silence after the shot, I heard the witness running. I believe we heard that much from Wesley Stickler. He went to use the public phone to inform the police. Which is when I made my escape. Which is when you left that slipper print? That the miraculous didn't bother taking my slippers off. I threw them out after I stepped in that paint, though. That was your mistake. No, my biggest mistake was coming to you for help, Mr. Justice. Eh? I believed in you. You and your anything agency. If anyone would get Walkie to click guilty, it was you. Well, you chose- you literally chose the wrong thing, plus we're a defense attorney, defending- Like, you know, defending them to not be guilty, not just to get them guilty. Like, you're clearly thinking the opposite. Freaking leader. I believe we, we've reached a conclusion of sorts. Prosecutor Gavin. How is Mr. Lita Tiara doing? She's confessed to everything, we're processing- we're processing her arrest now. I think the game sure seems calm for someone who just lost. I think he already knew. He figured out she was this killer a while ago. Some advice now's a good time to review all you know. Everything you learned over the last two days. He lost, but I didn't exactly win either. Hmm? Something that matter, her forehead? Looks like it's time to announce a verdict. Alright, we're about halfway done with the game. 
At least this game specifically, and then we'll head to Dull Destinies. Court is adjourned. Whew. Great job, Apollo. You did it. Yeah, we did it somehow. Lucky's off the hook. Free to become the gangster he always wanted to be. And he is always gonna thank you. Thank. Hey, attorney man. You gotta please what you did to my lead at home. What's to blame, I guess. You give my leader back. Super pointy head journey with a death wish. Enough, Walkie. Oh, hey. Ah, Mr. Kotaki. It's high time you opened your eyes, Walkie. What do you know, old man? I think it's about time you opened yours. Give us, give, give enough to life trying to become some kind of businessman. Don't talk about what you don't understand, Walkie. I'm afraid the guard is going to throw them both out. If not in jail, wouldn't that be a happy ending? Hey, maybe we can help them out. You know why Mr. Kotaki needed to make so much money? Maybe we should tell Walkie. Oh, Walkie, Apollo has something to tell you. Huh? I do? Would it put me on the spot? Eh? What's that? Show me the reason why, Apollo. Why is Mr. Kotaki trying to become a businessman? It's because of the bullet, right? It'll be like in you know, a chart. The bullet. Take that! Think about it, Walkie. Think about your condition. I talked with your mother, Little Plum, yesterday. It's me, but we need a lot of money right now. Clean money, that is. She doesn't mean... You aren't really, are you? I searched the globe. And I found one. A doctor who could take that bullet out of you, Walkie. But it's an expensive procedure. Man, but you've got plenty of money already. And, oh, well, I not mean to that. I won't use it. It was a gangster life that did this to you, Walkie. I want to help you. I want. I want you to do it. And I want to do it clean. What the? Are you telling me those were eye masks? <laughs> Please understand, Walkie. Dad. Man, I see how it is, old man. Always you looking out for... Out for... Lucky? Wasn't good, old man. One day. One day. I'm gonna take you out, then we'll see who's the OG. You try to hide in your business suit, I'll find you. Stupid old teaser. My Lucky. No, it's as it should be. Mr. Kotaki? I like it more without the puppy dog eyes. I'm glad to have met you. I'm not so good with the words. But I know a professional job when I see one. Thank you. Who? Me? I don't think. Someday, I'll bake you one of our latest, the Kentucky Lime Pie. He's opening a pie shop? So long. Whew. And he was gone. Well, let's head back, Apollo. To the bright anything agency. Hey, since when do I work at your agency? Ah, uh, you make a good team. Don't just stand there, let's get going. Huh? Why not? She, she did help me out. And there's a few questions that still need answers. Like the power of mine that she showed me. And my bracelet. If anyone can help me figure it out, it's her. Such what a magician she is. Well, I can't say I care much for what her father has become. Oh, that's right. We have to go someplace first. Huh? Where? Why is he claiming her war for Mr. Elder? Ah, huh, salty noodles, right? He got his stand back already. Oh, and after that, you can come see my show. For a special appearance with an amazing Mr. Hat. Yeah, I knew you were going to put him out. Oh, it's special, alright. Please, anything but him. Alright, there goes episode 2. Now we're about to head to episode 3, which is, um... Turnabout Serenade? Okay, tur Turnabout Serenade. We'll save that for... Let's save... Let's save the... Let's just save that for another time, okay? Well, that's the end of episode 2, and we got... Turnabout Succession.
Oh god, looks like Christoph Gavin again. Oh boy, we'll see what happens until then. But yeah, we're about halfway done now. So I'll try my best to try and get Dual Destinies just because I'm excited. Just because Dual Destiny is supposed to be like something a lot more new. It's supposed to be of justice, so. Yeah, but we'll, we'll continue on. Anyways, uh, anyway, thank you all for watching. That is episode 2. We're about to head to episode 3, turn, turn about Serenade. Prepare, be prepared for that for the next video. With that being said, peace out, guys.